Hey you guys, it's Janine. Um, so if you're not familiar with me, I am a new mobile groomer. My mobile van is being built as we speak. Should be ready in the next couple of weeks. But I thought it would be cool to talk about things that you need to start thinking about if you want to go mobile. So the first thing is what route are you going to go? Are you going to go conver converting your own van? Are you going to get a wagon tails? Are you going to get a hand -bake? Um, and just to be clear off the bat, I am getting a Hanvey built, so just because I know that'll be something people will be curious about. Um, I am getting a Hanvey, uh, Mercedes Sprinter Diesel. That's what I'm personally get. Um, I have videos where I've talked about that. I'm not going to talk about that as much in this video, uh, because that's not really the point of it. I just know that that's going to be something I'm going to be asked. So, I am getting a Hanvey van. But, like I said, first thing you need to think about, what route are you going? Because that will greatly determine like the rest of these questions so well at least the majority of them so if you are well really no matter what route you're going you're gonna have to worry about the down payment um now i'm not converting my own van uh if you do want to go that route i would go follow um pause and relax sk uh her name is savannah uh and she just converted her own van from a nissan van so I would go watch her video. She has actually done it. So go uh, see what she's about if you want to convert your own van. Because this is going to be more from um, this perspective of somebody that's buying through Wagon Tails or Hamby. Um, so first thing is you're going to have to worry about uh, the down payment on the van. Now this can vary. Uh, when I first talked to Hamby, they gave me a couple different quotes. It's all going to be based off of your credit. Um, also depending dependent on like what kind of loans you can get, like I said, due to your credit. Uh, you can also get a business loan, but if you are going to get a business loan, you have to be in business, I believe for yourself for two years um, to get that loan through a lot of places. They wanna see your work history for the last two years. And I'm pretty sure they don't just count it like if you've been working at like PetSmart or Petco, cause I know my friend Mel tried to get a van and even though she is making bank at Petco, she, was not approved for the loan because she didn't have the business history. So if you need to get a business loan, just keep in mind they're gonna be looking at the last two years. Uh, that also was not an option for me because my business has only been in, in business since October, which uh, is only a few months. So it's been about like roughly five months, something like that. Um, yeah, five months would be right. So that's a really, really important thing to know. Like I said, your credit is gonna affect it uh, and you need that two years under your belt. So. For somebody like that, that might be if you were in a shop and maybe thinking about going mobile, that might be an option. Um, but yeah, it's that the reason I really wanted to talk about this is it's not that easy to get a van. And I kind of want to let people know that so that if you are struggling to get a van, you know that you're not alone. It's actually like not that easy. Like they, you kind of, it's kind of like common belief like, oh, well, you know, mobile groomers make so much money and you're going to make so much money and blah, blah, blah. But like to prove that to a bank is not as easy said than done. So what a lot of people do and what I myself is doing or, or am doing, they get investors. So I personally am having a family member. My mom is my investor. She is also my partner in the business. She is basically my financial backing. So she has to be considered in everything because part of the business I'm repaying on my van, but I'm also paying her back because she helped me put down my deposit on the van. So those are things to think about if you are going to get an investor, which I know is the route that a lot of people go. Um, you know, if you have family, friends, whoever that are willing to invest in your business, that's obviously it's easier to pay them back than it would be a bank with interest. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, sorry, I must have like a hair on my nose. It's tickling me so bad. I'm trying to ignore it and it's like bothering me. Um, but either way, uh, the next thing that you need to think about is insurance. Um, so you want to make sure you are covered for everything because there are factors here that you don't think about in a shop. Like if you're bringing the dog from the dog's house to your van and it slips its lead and runs off, are you covered? Um, and, you know, is your van covered? Are your tools inside covered? All of those things you need to make sure are covered. Uh, so another important thing to think about, because I didn't mention this earlier, but another option is a trailer. Um, trailers, I'm really on the fence about because I have learned they're very easy to break into and they're very hard to insure. So keep that in mind. If you're 
doing, if you have a, tailor, a trailer business and you haven't really looked too much into the insurance, make sure you really go over your insurance and make sure that all the contents in your trailer are covered. Because what I commonly see is that the actual trailer is covered under insurance, but the shit inside of it is not. So make sure your insurance covers your tools too, because if somebody breaks in and steals all your clickers, you do not want to be fucked, you know? So anyway, uh, insurance is really, really important. Now, the insurance that Hanvey recommends is general insurance. They, I actually just called them, and they're going to be calling me back, so um, that's possibly what I'm going to be using. But there's general insurance, there's pet biz, there's a couple. Um, I do recommend working with a company that does deal specifically with animals because – you know, sometimes maybe like State Farm, for example, they may not like realize like all the freak things that can happen when you work with animals. But if you go somewhere like General or Pet Biz, um, or no, sorry, I think it's Governor. I, I think I, it's Governor and I keep messing that up. Let me look. I'm going to look in the packet. It's Governor Insurance. I keep General, Governor, they're like the same in my head for some reason. They shouldn't made two insurance companies with like almost the same name. But this is what Hamby gives you in your pack if you're interested in the Hamby van. Um, this is, we'll do this, we'll talk about this in another video, but this is my little pack. Um, but, so, call about your insurance, make sure you're covered. This is actually a good example, because they show all the things that you can be insured for. So you'll have auto liability, loss of income, that's important too. So if your van, especially you wagon tails people with your generators, if your van goes in the uh, shop for the generator, you need to make sure you have this loss of income for your grooming. Um, so that way, you know, you're also covered, like your van's in the shop and you, you don't want just like your repairs covered. You want to make sure that that time off. So if you're missing $1,500 that week because you couldn't groom, you need to make sure you're covered for that too. Uh, so... Let's see, specialized coverage for the customized portion of your van and trailer. So maybe that might be like maybe the graphics. Um, animal floater, this is really important. That's um, injury or death. So that's, you know, if, um, you know, the animal ran away from you, got hit by a car or something like that. Uh, professional liability, that covers you. So like if you um, cut a dog, for example, like that, that's different. Okay, so that's different than the floater insurance because that's if they like leave your care, right? So the um, professional liability is if you like cut a dog, nick a dog, anything like that. Uh, I think it even covers if you like had a reaction to like a shampoo, you, like or if the dog had a reaction, it, it might cover that too. Um, but I'll find out. <laughs> we'll talk, maybe, maybe we'll do a whole separate video on insurance. You know what, let's do that. Um, but I'm going to quickly graze over these other ones just in case you were interested. Uh, next one is business income and extra expense covers you for actual loss of earnings. Sorry. So the other one was um, that must have been uh, for your grooming items, the first one I was talking about, because this is business income or ex and extra expense. So it covers your actual loss of earnings for up to 12 months. Um, this is not a disability po um, policy is what it has um, bold. So keep that in mind. Um, business and product liability protects your business against claims for injuries or damage. Um from your products. Okay, so that's going to be like your shampoos and stuff. Um, professional liability. Um, yeah, that pro the, the professional liability covers you for your performance. Um, so if like an animal was hurt then, and then the, the product liability, that's going to be your um, shampoos and shit. And it also has personal property and transmit in transit pays to repair or replace your equipment, stock and contents. So I guess this is a little bit confusing. We'll go over this in another video after I talk to them. Sorry. Anyway, so insurance is important. Um, next thing, business licenses. Now, this is important. This is not per county, and this is for the United States only. I can't say for other countries because I haven't been there. So United States only. This is per county, and this is South Carolina. It might be different. You need to check with your like local area, but in South Carolina, I can't just go. I'm in Anderson County, right? But I can't just go buy a business license for Anderson County, and it covers all the cities within. It does not. It only, like, I can go to Anderson City and get a license for Anderson City, but then I live in Williamston, which is in Anderson County, but I would need a separate license for Williamston. So make sure you're covered 
um, for the areas you're going to be in, especially if you're mar using a marked vehicle. You house call groomers, um, you are probably a little bit more okay with this. You're driving a car that's not marked, so you're less likely to get stopped for it. So, um, And if you do get stopped, it's not the end of the world. If you don't have your business license, typically they'll just let you go get it real quick. So keep that in mind. But just, I would be more prepared because I would not want to be in the middle of a service with a dog and get a knock on my window that I have to go get a business license. You know what I mean? So just plan on that. Uh, next thing, mileage. That is gas plus maintenance, okay? So I think the national average is like 53 cents per mile that you get back. So keep in mind that covers your gas plus your maintenance. So keep that in mind, especially you 1099 people. So you can't write off your, um, uh, like if you go take your car in, like I, I went and got new brakes. I can't write that off, even though I use my car for house call because I'm getting reimbursed for my mileage, which is the 53 cents a mile. So that covers gas plus maintenance. That was something to know. Now, if you're coming from a shop and you've never worked with uh, in a mobile van before, be prepared for the elements. This is something that you don't think about when you're sitting in a shop, but you've got to find a way that you're going to get that dog inside without it getting ruined, right? You don't want its feet getting all nasty as you try to walk it through. So what's your plan? Are you going to carry it? Are you going to put it under your jacket? Are you going to have an umbrella? Like, what's your plan? So be prepared for that. Um... Oh, and snow. You northern people, I tend to forget about this because it's not something I, in South Carolina, we don't get tons of snow. If we got snow, I would cancel the day. But you northern people, you can't just cancel for your whole winter. So be prepared for the snow. You need to um, have like some sort of antifreeze system in your van. Like if you have the wagon tails, they have the antifreeze system. Um, Hanvey has an Everwarm system. So talk to Hanvey about the Everwarm system. You need to make sure that your pipes are going to be okay. You do not want pipes freezing and breaking in your van. It's not a good time. So... Um, be prepared for that. Be prepared for, well, actually, I'm going to skip ahead for a second because um, it's kind of like, because I just listed these out real quick. So I'm skipping ahead, but it's not really that, it, it goes with the last topic. So um, like I said, be prepared for snow, but also if you're in a mountainous area or like there's like a real, there's hilly areas, if you're by the coast with the salt, like these are all things to keep in mind. And northern people with your salt trucks, oh my god, that shit will ruin your cars. So keep that in mind. Like is mobile grooming the best thing for your particular area? Like, you know, and I'm not saying that if you're in Canada that you can't drive a mobile van. It's just you're going to face different challenges in Canada than I'm going to face in South Carolina in the mountains where I'm not near the beach or anything like that, right? So anyway, just keep that in mind. Now, next thing, dry time takes longer, okay? It takes longer. There's so much moisture in that air, it is really hard to get that that hair dry. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, just, just really keep it in mind. Um, I think you can get dehumidifiers, but it's really just something to kind of keep in mind. Maybe you can, like I know Hanvey has a vent system to help um, air out some of the moisture in there, but I'm just telling you, be prepared that your dry time may take a little bit longer. It's going to be a little bit more frustrating, frustrating, especially on those double coated freets. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Be ready for your payments. This is something I learned the hard way. I assumed when I bought my van that I would just be good to go. Like I wouldn't have to make a payment on it until I got the van. That is not true. I My van is being built. I signed the paper about three weeks ago. Uh, next week or the week after, my first van payment is due. I will not have my van for the next few weeks. So there's a possibility I could get two van payments before I even get my van because I signed the paperwork for the van. So basically how it works, if you're going to go through Wagon Tails or Hanby, you have the van and then you have the conversion. So you're going to pay... Ford, Dodge, or uh, Mercedes for your van. Those are the three typical that are used in Dodge or, um, or sorry, the three typical that are used in Wagon Tails or Hamby. So you're going to be buying that, and then you pay Wagon Tails or Hamby for the conversion. So you have two separate things there, right? So I paid off my conversion for the van. So I owe Mercedes for my van. So Mercedes, I have signed the paperwork with them. We have set up the financing, yada, yada. So in Mercedes' eyes, I have my van. They've been sending me shit. They're like, activate your uh, satellite radio or whatever the fuck. You get free XM radio. I've been getting those emails for the last couple weeks because in Mer Mercedes' eyes, I have the van because I I've signed the paperwork. We've scheduled the financing, all that. So they're going to bill me four weeks after I've signed for the van. So 
if the van takes eight weeks to build, that means I could get two van payments before I actually receive my van. So I'm telling you this so that if you are planning on buying a van that you go ahead and put back at least three months of van payments so that way you are ready whenever if you get hit with a van payment before you actually have the van because you do not want to be in a boat that you can't pay for your van payment before you even freaking get your van okay so just want to throw that out there because that's not something I knew until uh, I got the notification that I needed to make a payment on my van and I was like uh what so anyway keep that in mind um the next thing this is just for businesses in general you need an accountant you need an accountant because they're going to help you with things that you don't know about because there's a lot of things with taxes that you don't know about. So like the self-employment tax, that's something I didn't know about. I thought we just paid out taxes like everybody else and we do. We pay out more though because we get a 15% or I think it's like 15.3 or something, but basically 15% self-employment tax is non-deductible. So what does that mean? That means I cannot write off my gas and my mileage and all that. I can write that off on my income tax, but I cannot write that off on my self-employment tax. So if you're going to be self-employed, be prepared. You're going to pay an income tax and a self-employment tax and you're going to pay taxes on your van and you're going to pay taxes on fucking everything. You're going to have to, the business license, that's basically like them, like essentially another tax. They're like, I want, you can work in my town, but you got to pay me for it. Such is life. So be prepared for lots of taxes. Um, Oh, and when we're talking about Wagon Tails versus Hamvee, I have videos where I've talked more in depth about them, and I want to make a video where I actually meet up with a Wagon Tails person and show vans side by side, like, this is what you get in this van, this is what you get in that van, with, like, just, like, without favoritism, like, just truly looking at it, this is what you get in this van, this is what you get in that van. I want to do a video like that, but the main difference between Wagon Tails and Hamvee is Hamvee does not have a generator. Wagon Tails does have a generator. So that's the two things to keep in mind. Do your research on the generators and see what you think. I'm not going to put my opinion in there because <laughs> it's my opinion. Like I don't like the generators so I didn't get a van with a the generator. There's somebody walking in front of my house so I may have to pause this because my dogs might explode. It's a 50-50 right now. Um, uh, no, hold on. All right, sorry about that. Um, I live on a main road and there's a lot of people that walk back and forth and my dogs just like lose it whenever they see people. So anyway, the whole world knows we have dogs. Um, anyway, so back to our point. Uh, like I said, generator versus no generator, decide what you like. Um, and I'll do a separate video where I actually talk about like what I prefer and why. And I'll give you my opinions on it, which they are opinions. Okay, it's not, that's just what I prefer. Okay, anyway, no one cares. Next thing. Get yourself a good booking app. I really don't care what booking app that you want to use, but you need something electronic that sends out your reminders for you. You do not want to be, when you're in your mobile van, busy as fuck, you do not want to be making phone calls, figuring out who's coming in tomorrow. Get yourself a text reminder thing. It's good to have all your shit electronic anyway. I don't know about, like, I don't know how trendy this is across the world, but I've just noticed a trend in something. It's, like, not a trend at all. But it's, like, that. I just noticed among people in this area that they all handwrite everything. It's not practical. Um, putting it all in a booking system, like, I personally use MoGo. That's what works for me. Uh, but I'll just show you real quick. So here's the MoGo app. I can pull up my calendar. It will automatically show me everything that I need to see. Um, if I want to put in, even when I'm going on vacation, I'll put in like for my vacation, like, like you can see like this, this month I have a bunch of business shit to do. So you're going to see a lot of that. Um, you can put your clients in here, you put your dogs, you can put what haircuts you did, all of that shit. So it'll all be electronic. But the main thing is those text reminders. That saves me so much time. Like, I know before I even go in who has confirmed and who has not confirmed. And if somebody doesn't confirm, then I have, like, one person to call. You know what I mean? Rather than having to call my full day and be like, hey, are you coming tomorrow? And maybe they don't answer and now I don't know. And, you know, do text reminders. It just is so much easier. Get you a system that is going to do your text reminders and stuff for you. Also, MoGo helps you route. So I... um. I can like type in an address. I'm pretty sure I haven't. I just like happen to already have my clients booked where they're close to each other. But I'm pretty sure what you can do is like when you have a new address. Let's see. I'm going to try to do it right now. 
you know what? No, we're going to do that in another video. But it's going to help you route your appointments too. That's what these booking apps are meant to do. They're going to, they should help you put it in clusters so you know like, oh, I'm going to be in this area this day. So don't make your life harder on yourself. Um, oh yeah, here it is. See, uh, it says smart scheduling. You can do that. Um, so anyway, get yourself a booking app. It just makes sense. Uh... And that's really it other than um, the conversion thing I just wanted to say. Like the reason that I didn't personally go that route is that it is probably just depending because, you know, when you think wagon tails are handy, that's what they do all day long is make vans. So they have a whole team of people that are making this one van. Whereas if you were making it yourself, you're probably going to run into more things and it's just going to take you a little bit longer. Um, it can be cheaper in the long run, but, you know, it just depends. Uh, so... I, I think that that pretty much clears it up other than, like I said, we'll talk more in detail about booking apps and insurance. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be a good video. We'll do a, we'll do one on booking app insurance and insurance. But those are some main things that um, I would have liked to know a little bit more about whenever I went into doing my own mobile business. Uh, really, especially the stuff about the down payment and stuff. I really did not think it was going to be as hard as it was to get financing for it. Like I kind of knew because I don't have like amazing credit. So I kind of knew I would need a co-signer, but it was like, it was not easy to obtain this van. So I wanted to just kind of talk about that because I just want to get it out there. It's not easy. And you know, because I don't want anybody to feel discouraged if they're having a hard time getting one. Like just know like you're just gonna have to keep pushing and thinking of like other options. Um, and I wish I had like simple advice to like help you get your van faster. But it like was not easy for me. I was only able to do it because I had somebody to help me financially. And now I owe them and Hamby a ton of money. Uh, but I'm gonna figure it out. And I'm not too worried about it. And I can't wait to show you guys how I do it. Um, so we'll talk about more things with mobile down the line, but I just kind of wanted to go over some like key things that like I didn't know whenever I went into mobile grooming. Um, yeah, I didn't know a lot going in. I, I didn't even know there was more than one company. All I'd ever seen was Wagon Tails at the trade shows. I'm sure Hamby was there too, but um, Wagon Tails just like kind of has a flashier way about them. So it's like eye catching and I just noticed them. So anyway, uh, I never really paid attention to Hamby Vans, but, you know, I do like their inverter system. But that's that's preference, and we'll talk about that in another video. Um, maybe I'll just make a video, like, why did I pick Hanby? Um, but I think I'll make, wait to make that video until I have the van so I can show you. I think that'll make sense. But anyway, uh, I hope this video is helpful. If you were curious about mobile and maybe interested in knowing a little bit more what it's like uh, and things to think about, like I said, the extra taxes. So like if you're working in a shop right now, especially if you're W-2, like you're kind of like, at this point, because I've been 1099 and now I'm a business owner, W-2 people, you guys really have it easy with your tax returns. Mm -hmm, must be nice. <laughs> like as 1099 and business owners, we got to pay money at tax time. You guys are all over here all excited with your tax refunds. Mm -hmm, must be nice. <laughs> I'm kidding, but this, I'm telling you that I'm being honest. Appreciate those W-2s because those are nice. It's nice not having to pay off. The rest of us are over here stressing at tax season because you're like, shit, now I'm about to owe a ton of money. So, um, you know, taxes, like I said, that self-employment tax, that was news to me. Uh, and then I also want to make a video more talking about, like, the steps to go through to, like, set up your business, like, getting your EIN, which is your employer identification number, which is basically, like, your social security number, but for your business. It's kind of like your business's social security number, you know, does pretty much the same thing, uh, but just business-wise. So, anyway, I'll make more business-related videos, uh. Cause I'm in a little bit, like I, I'm, I'm getting my feet wet in business. So I, I could definitely tell you what the beginning was like, because I just made it past the beginning. So it's kind of easy for me to reflect and tell you like, yeah, this is how it went starting it up. Um, and sometimes it's not super smooth, <laughs> which is what happened with me, but we'll, we'll make another video about that. But yeah, anyway, I can blab on for hours. So I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope this video was helpful. If you were interested in vans and maybe wanted to know a few like weird little details that people don't tell you about, 
Um, yeah, that's it. So be prepared to have good credit, a decent down payment, and about two years of experience in business under your belt so that you can get your business loan. It's hard. It is hard. So maybe one day they'll find ways to do it easier. And there are other options too, by the way. Uh, you can do, um, if you have a house that's paid off, you can do it, um, like get a mortgage on your home, get a cash out mortgage on your home. You can do that. Um, or a home equity loan, you can do that. Um, so there are some other options if you can't find investors, but they sure as hell don't make it easy to get these vans, I can tell you that much. Um, and that's something, that was the main thing I wish I would have known, was that I think I went in thinking that I was going to be able to get this pretty easily, and it was a battle, an uphill battle the whole way, and now I'm finally reaching the top of this hill, and I'm like seeing the payoff off in the distance, I haven't received it yet, but I can see it coming, and I'm happy about that, but anyway, mobile grooming is a whole new experience for me, I can't wait to share this journey with you guys, and thank you for listening to me blab on for like 20 plus minutes, you guys are awesome, I love you guys, I'll see you in the next one, Bye bye